It's time for love readings. You're going to get the most out of this love reading if you watch it for your moon sign. This video right here, if you haven't seen it, will tell you why. There's a link in the description box below so you can go right to that to find out why. Um, but regardless of whether you're watching this for your moon sign, which you should be, um, or, or not, whatever, um, I just wanna tell you what we are covering today. What do you need to let go of? Um, what what are you attracting this month in regards to love? What's out of your control? And then what act, what do you need to take action on? We're going to look at singles, couples, and then it's complicated situations. So that could be polyamorous. Maybe um, you're talking to each other, but it's not Facebook official yet. On again, off again, whatever that is. I'm going to do singles first, then couples, and then it's complicated last. The reason being because sometimes when it's complicated, pieces of the single reading and the couple's reading will resonate hard for you and you might wanna go and watch those pieces as well, okay? Um, I think I already said, but this reading is from now until June 15th. Um, and the reason why I go half month to half month is because I put out the general readings at the beginning of every month and then money readings um, also right after that. So let's get started. Oh, I'm using the Gilded Tarot deck today. If you're wondering what that's about, there's a link in the description box below if you wanna purchase one. I don't sell them, but um, if you get it through the affiliate link, I might get like two or three cents from that and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So you're just helping a sister out to keep making these videos. Leo Singles, what do you need to let go of to find love? And they're just saying, um, this lack of enthusiasm to go out and find it. If you're not excited for it to come in, well, then it's not gonna be excited to come find you, right? <laughs> okay, so what are you attracting right now? And they're like, well, actually, you know what you want, okay? But for some of you, you like the challenge. You like to be in the position of, do I go this way, do I go that way? You like to be at the fork in the road, okay? And so some of you are, sort of attracting unavailable partners because you like the chase. You're a hunter, you're a predator, okay? And so um, even though you know what you want, maybe we wanna change our mindset a little bit on that part. Um, okay, because that just causes pain down the road, right? We're not gonna get what we want from them emotionally. We'll get the thrill of the chase, which will make it exciting again, but sometimes, you know, uh, partners that are very available, they might seem needy to us or they might seem boring. And so that is, um, you know, if you want something that's long lasting, that's maybe a better bet. <laughs> so I guess what is the advice then in order to try to find that more um, exciting for you? And they're just saying, have talking about it, having conversations about it um should you talk to them about it and they're like no don't do that <laughs> you know like anybody you meet like if if they seem a little boring like hey man you seem a little boring um you know if you could just be like a little bit more of an asshole to me i'd be more into you i'd want to fuck you more no um <laughs> don't do that should it be like a friend they're like well you don't really want to do that because you're still in that mode of like eh, i don't know how i feel like i'm not super enthused um should it be maybe a therapist and they're like well <laughs> some of you know that that's who it should be but you're sort of choosing to not think about it not deal with it because that's not easy it's hard we have to go back into our past and you know work through the fact that our father left us or whatever the situation is that led to you you know sort of chasing unavailable partners so anyway what's outside of your control this month and they're just saying there's going to be some feelings that you've stuffed okay and for some of you those are just going to make you feel uncomfortable all right you might feel bloated you might feel kind of icky um for others of you this is going to be an issue of energetic shielding some of you might actually put weight on and you're going to think like oh it's because i'm social distancing i'm just like watching netflix eating um, maybe a little bit of it's from that, but actually what happens if we don't um, sort of protect our own energy field, okay? Um, your body, you, cause I, okay, cause I know you're like, whoa, this is going woo woo out there. Like she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. Trust me, I do. Everybody knows somebody who runs those 26 
mile marathons like five times a year and they constantly train. They run like 14 miles a day like a psycho and they hardly eat anything, right? So, and if you're one of those, sorry, um, <laughs> that's, that's tough. But everybody knows somebody like that who, even though they work out crazy, they eat super clean or they almost eat nothing, they just are still kind of chubby. And the reason why is because they're not protecting their own energy field. They're probably an empath, okay? They feel the feelings of others, they absorb those. And so your body goes, you know what, I'm just gonna put a little fat right here as our own shield, okay? So when you start to energetically protect yourself, that's done by setting boundaries, okay? But also you can just like imagine a giant purple bubble of energy around you, okay? Um, that will actually help you lose that weight that your body's like refusing to let go of because it's trying to help you, okay? The mind, body, spirit are all connected. So um, what do you need to take action on in order to find that partner that you're looking for? And they're just like, you just need to understand that not everything happens overnight. And a lot of times those love at first sight, like boom, um, attractions that, you know, sweep us off our feet end up to be toxic relationships. And so keeping that in your mind that, you know, it's a process is going to be helpful. Okay. Be patient, <laughs> give things time and evaluate maybe why your um, reaction or lack of reaction is there. Okay. With people you might be interested in. Leo couples, what do you need to let go of? And they're just saying, focusing on the tiny details of things. Okay. Let's think big picture. If you know, what my partner is annoying me with today isn't gonna matter a year from now, let it go. Don't be nitpicky, okay? What is it that you're attracting right now into your relationship? And it's sort of like this idea that I don't want to maybe advance commitments. You know, I don't really feel like I want to get engaged. Or maybe I am engaged, but I don't really know that I want to set that wedding date, okay? And maybe it's not even related to your partner. Maybe it's related to coronavirus. Or, um, you know, maybe I'm not ready to buy a house because maybe I don't know that I want to live in this city. Or maybe I want to wait for my credit score to go up. Or, you know, whatever. A lot of you, it's not going to be related to the relationship itself but it will affect the relationship. And so, you know, it's like you're attracting a little bit of this, like, mm, I don't want to attitude. And if you're not the one who's feeling it, you're somehow affecting your partner and they're feeling that way. And I feel like for 60% of you, that's more the case. It's like what you're attracting into the relationship is almost like a little resistance or delay energy with your for your partner to move towards what it is that you want. And then the other 40%, um, it's you that's feeling that way, okay? So what's outside of your control in the relationship? And it's just like, the, <laughs> the manifestation train is going really fast. So what we think about expands, okay? What we focus on grows. And that is true for you, but it is also true for your partner. And it's like, Seeds that were planted a long time ago have just all of a sudden received a lot of sunshine and a lot of rain and they're just like sprouting quickly and that train can't stop, okay? It's already in action, it's already in motion, things are going on behind the scenes, moving in the direction that you wanted to go in before. Now for a lot of you, it's things are still headed really quickly in the direct, you still wanna go in the direction that you wanted to before, okay? Things are moving like really, really fast. But um, for a few of you, the situation is, you know, maybe your partner is sort of manifesting something a little bit different than you. And so for the most part, you want to go in the same direction, but there's going to be a little bit of hiccup here and there. Because um, it's like, okay, we both want to go to Texas, okay? But I want to go to San Antonio and you want to go to Houston. I mean, at the end of the day, you both, you end up in Texas, right? And maybe you land somewhere in the middle, but there's like a little bit of a, a little bit of a hiccup there but things are in motion okay whatever goals you have hashtag relationship goals whatever those are you're getting there you're going there okay but it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy ride okay so 
what do you need to take action on in your relationship this month? And they're just saying, you know, don't be disappointed. And it kind of goes back to the beginning when they're like, don't be nitpicky. Don't focus too much on the details because it's not going to fucking matter soon. Like big picture thinking, right? Same thing with that silly Texas example. Big picture thinking is we both want to be there. So let's focus on what we have in common, what we both want. Let's not get stuck on the details of things and create more, you know, of a bumpy ride because we're going there and we're going fast. And if we experience a lot of bumps, if I'm putting bumps there, like one of the wheels is going to fall off, could be like kind of sad and delay things like the ultimate end goal. So, you know, just be cognizant of that. Now, for those of you in complicated situations. Okay, so maybe you're on again, off again. Maybe you're polyamorous. Maybe you're just not Facebook official. You don't know what you are necessarily. You didn't put a label on it. What do you need to let go of this month? They're just like, look, you need to let go of this fear that all the lessons you've learned, all the things from your past are going to repeat themselves. They're like, you're good. You're fine. You're stable. Like you've learned those lessons already. They're not going to come back and haunt you. There's nothing to be afraid of. Okay. And you know, sometimes if you're in an on again and off again relationship, it's like, oh, well, I'm afraid that this thing that happened in our relationship before is going to happen again. They're like, nah, things are cool. They're fine. Don't be afraid anymore. Or um, maybe it's a new relationship and you're like, I'm so afraid this person's going to cheat or I'm so afraid that, you know, six months from now, I'm just going to lose interest and hurt them or whatever your fear is. They're like, things are cool. Let's just like deal with right now. Okay. Because a lot of things we worry about never happen anyway. So why are we giving it our energy? So what's outside of your control? The way that whoever you're dealing with communicates with you. The way they start conversations, when they start conversations, how things come across. You know, I mean, maybe you're with somebody who calls you a name that you don't really like. And you've told them that, but it's like ingrained in them. They can't help it, you know? like. Oh, um, sweetie pie, and you don't like it, right? Or they call you bitch or, you know, whatever. Like, hey, bitch, you know, I mean, and you find it disrespectful and you've already told them, but it's like a habit. Unfortunately, we can't control them. We can't make them stop that. We can't, like, make them say what we want them to say, nor not say what we don't want them to say. We can't prevent them from trying to have these conversations, leaving weird voicemails, sending strange texts that we don't necessarily want to deal with. It's out of our control. So what is it that you need to take action on in your current romantic situation? And they're just saying, you need to do what's best for you. You need to follow through with ideas that work best for you. Whether that, and it seems like, um, this has to do with career, money, moving, home, assets, cars, you know, whatever. Don't take the other person or the other people into consideration. You do you. Follow through with your ideas for what's best for you on the earth plane. You know, earth energy is things that we can hold or own or have, you know. And um, I mean, they'll either come around or they won't. They'll support you or they won't, but then you learn something about that relationship, okay? So I love you so much, and that is June.